I would really love for you guys to meet someone who I would class as a friend. I don't know if he calls me a friend, but I'm certainly going to call him a friend. It's Archbishop Reyes from Poland. And I actually had the pleasure of being over in Poland about three years ago and getting to spend some time with the Archbishop, walk around his house, eat some of his food, meet some of his friends. Um, and it was just one of the greatest experiences that I've ever had. And I, I've been over in Poland since, and you've always just made me feel so welcome and have just always came across to me as someone with hope and just a real touch of the Holy Spirit about you, Archbishop. So I'm really excited that we're getting this time to talk together tonight. And the whole pleasure is on my side, yeah. Oh. I actually paid them to say that, but you know, I'll take it anyway. And and how um how's life been treating you? Have you been doing well over in Poland? Everything okay? Well, I, I even hope we are better than you in uh, on the islands. Uh, it's a little bit safer, I think. Not yeah, too I bad. Think... Not too bad. Not too bad. Please, uh, please to. Uh, Reading the time, I think that we have the September just given by God to to do the best we can, yeah. yeah. Because there is no any regulations, uh, everything is possible. So uh, we are on the last the more, last steps to the big congregations uh, in Łódź, in my city, and we expect a great gatherings of the people because we still can do it, yeah? Yeah. Well, we're afraid that in October or November it will be impossible, but now we have a great opportunity to to call the church to come together and to to evangelize. So this is a great good news. Amazing. And and this weekend you are having a, an evangelism kind of conference, but, or a, sorry, I've probably got the word wrong. What, what does that look like for you? What is, what's the weekend going to look like? Uh, there's one thing which is important for the whole country, but uh, there are a few things important for my, for my diocese. Yeah? Mm -hmm. For country, we have uh, starting on 9th of September, the National Congress of New Evangelization. We expect uh, probably 600 people coming to Łódź, people who are deeply involved in evangelization. And uh, as always, the Congress consists of three parts. The one part is the kind of retreat for uh, all the evangelizers, because as you know, we cannot evangelize if we do not meet God actually. Yeah. And uh, the second thing is uh, some lectures and workshops on, uh, on the subject. This time the subject is evangelization of a big city. Uh, this is quite important, but uh, if you ask me, I will tell what I mean. And the third is evangelization itself, because it is crazy to talk about evangelization without uh, evangelizing. So, mm. so at the end, we go, there, is, there will be a big meeting, big, I hope, big event on a um, Speedway Stadium this time, because we have two football stadiums, but uh, the people in the city are very divided and sometimes even hostile to, to each other. They're being um, followers of one team or another. So sure. <laughs> Speedway is better because everybody... Yeah. <laughs> we, we've got a, we have a similar problem in Glasgow. You know, you can't <laughs> have one stadium or the other. You need to play. Yeah, this play is, this is exactly the case. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and and Archbishop, one of the things that's always spoke to me about you is your is your heart for seeing people come to faith, like just that passion that you have at your core for evangelism. Where, where do you think that passion comes from? Do you think it's a a gift from God, or do you think it's something you've really been called into, or what does that look like for you? Got it all, dude. The true answer is always the experience of Jesus Christ. Yeah? Mm. There is nothing outside to inspire you to evangelize. I remember when we organized the first Congress was uh, 10 years ago and uh, uh, 
Well, it became quite famous because it was the first one. Yeah, so many oh. journalists came asking, "Aha, uh -huh, you do the Congress of Evangelization because your numbers are decreasing. There is not too many people going to the church now. There are some who do not want to baptize the children. Blah 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 blah." So the question was about numbers, and the answer is that. Uh, uh, the crisis is not the reason to go to evangelize. Yeah? The crisis can uh, make use of it <laughs> and more distress. Yeah? So the, what really calls you to evangelization is just a meeting with, with Jesus, which is so important for you that you cannot uh, not to speak about it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, this is important. This is what Francis said. Francis said that if you see yourself being not on fire to evangelize, uh, he said, go and pray. Not go, so do not go anywhere to, to speak about Christ because you have nothing to, to say. Yeah, go and pray and uh, be fascinated with Christ. When you, got, when you get su such a fascination, this is mm -hmm. a right time to go outside, yeah, but without it, it will be not good news, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And and I would love to um I'd love to pick your brains about your your journey to becoming an archbishop. Now, as as someone who didn't grow up in church, the idea of standing talking to an archbishop is still one of the most exciting things for me. It's it's like you're like some kind of superhero. Like what what was that journey like for you? Like you know you you went from being a priest to an auxiliary bishop, and then um you you know you moved around a little bit before you ended up in in Woods. Like what what's that journey been like for you? How do I guess the question that I kind of want to know is what what where have been the steps in your journey through leadership that you've just said this is definitely where I'm supposed to be right now. Okay. You, you want me to be serious? Or <laughs> be, sometimes just, just... You... Well, the answer is that uh, it comes with the call on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the, the, last, the last moment, for instance, to come to Uchi, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, it was not my idea at all. Well, even being arch, being auxiliary bishop in Krakow was not also always uh, also my idea. Yeah, yeah. Before I've been the rector of the seminary, and it was not also my idea. <laughs> <laughs> when I be well, I do not want to to go the old way back, but uh, uh, when I became priest. I also became a, well, not from the beginning, but at the end, the professor of ecclesiastical history. So uh, I've been a professor, you know, having my mm. own chair in the university. Yeah. And then uh, the best moment in my life, uh, I, I, be, I became a head of the archives in the Cathedral of Krakow. So the best place for a historian, you know, all the mm. jewels of our history. The, the oldest book we have is from Scottish monk. Oh, but, really? Yeah, but he wrote it in Italy, you know. <laughs> but this is Why would anyone like, go to Italy? Surely, Henri is getting very excited there. But, but, you know. but exciting is that the book was brought to Krakow by the German monk from Germany. <laughs> <laughs> you feel the, uni the Europe united? Yeah, it's, it's like the Eurovision Song Contest. We're all oh, coming yeah, together, yeah. 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 So being there, I was hoping this is my last uh, destination. Yeah. Yeah. And then it always comes like that. Yeah. You get the phone, the call. That's a cardinal called me, said, I want you to be director of the seminary. I mean, the vocation comes with the event. Yeah. And when it comes with the event, to say no, you need uh, a really good reason. <laughs> yeah. But if you have not such a reason, good enough, 
you try to read the events yeah and the lord coming with the the events so the, mm -hmm. so here i am yeah, so yeah this is why i think this is why it happens yeah yeah i i i sometimes think that um you know the the phrase that we sometimes use is god call uh, god equips the called he doesn't call the equipped and and i feel that that's so accurate sometimes and and i think you know answering the phone like i i certainly don't feel like i'm the right person to be leading this thing for alpha but i'll just do it until they find someone else is kind of how i feel um and nobody else has picked up the phone yet so if anyone's phone rings in the next little while just answer that'd be great but um <clears throat> One of the one of the things that I also really love about you, Archbishop, is that you have this um, you've got this this rooted historical knowledge that always comes out to me as a sense of hope. Like you always seem to have kind of hope for the long term, and actually being able to move things over time. How how would you say that um, you you can gather that together in your daily life? Like, do you have a a particular style of devotion that you like to use or is it is there something that you just kind of pick yourself up every day and you say this is how i'm going to have hope for the for the rest of this vision the rest of this mission yeah you ask me about the the the, the reasons for hope mm. i don't know if it is the right answer but uh um, this is the question which was asked to John Paul II once by two great philosophers. I knew personally one of them, and they met with Pope in uh, in, uh, in in Vatican. And the question was like like this: How you you can have hope? being the survivor of second war so being the survivor of the time of nazis then communists so you saw all the evil of the world nearly so how can you uh, be so hopeful and so joyful it was the question asked and he answered that there is a borderline pointed by God and that border is impossible for evil to pass over. Yeah, so the evil can come close to, to such a border, but it cannot cross it yeah? and uh, and uh, this border is always in uh, in the people so even in auschwitz yeah mm -hmm. the border had uh, had the, uh, uh, the points important points like maximilian kolbe like edith stein or or many many people we do not know by name yeah mm -hmm. but I remember one of, of the survivors from Auschwitz, uh, he still lives, uh, Marian Turski, he's near his 90s now. And uh, uh, he was uh, taken to Auschwitz uh, in, in the very beginning of the war. And after coming to Auschwitz, he was pushed and his, uh, how you call it? My glasses. Glasses, glasses. fall down and, and were crushed. So it was the moment for him to, to be uh, as a sentence uh, of death, yeah, because mm. without glasses, he could do nothing in the, in the camp. And imagine the, the, the team of 10 people collected the bread to buy the glasses for him. The bread in Auschwitz, yeah? something beyond imagination, the real treasure, mm. yeah? bread. There's a book uh, on the dreams the people had in Auschwitz, and uh, the, the main subject is bread, mm. never, never cakes. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. the cakes, but bread, bread was so important. Yeah. And they, they collected 10 people, offered their own bread to be able to, to buy him the glasses. That's why he survived. Mm. Without the glasses, he couldn't survive the Auschwitz. So for him, those 10, these 10 people are real, the border, yeah, they, they, mm -hmm. they, they point the border for evil. And the evil cannot pass over. Cannot pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a beautiful sentiment, isn't it? And actually, I think you know um, the 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 idea of that hard line of people being able to to be a line around things, you know, and and especially as a people of prayer, I think that's such an important thing for us to remember as well that actually where we draw our battle lines, where we put our borders as, as a family, as a, as a movement together can really change things. I'd, I'd love to ask you, um, Archbishop, what, what do you see the, the future of the, the Catholic Church looking like in Poland? I realise that's a, a massive question, but you know, we're, we're in a time with such change in our society and, you know, uh, Part of the reason I have in this call is that Generation Z are the largest percentage of of the population. What what changes do you think that's going to make for the church, for you guys? Well, this is the question many many people ask now in Poland, because I think the pandemia uh, has shown us quite a few features of our church. Yeah? I always say that it is not the pandemia to to create the crisis, but this is a good uh, a good chance to see uh, the truth about our church from the time before. Mm. Um, so this is the one point. The second is that uh, we learn a lot. I think during last year and a half. And it would be great for us if we remember what we got. Um, surely the, the, the ecclesiastical life became much more personal. There was a time in Poland, I don't know, uh, in, uh, in Scotland or Britain, but there was a time in Poland that we could have five people in the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for instance, we couldn't, uh, organized a confirmation for 50 or 100 young people as we are used to do. So what can you do? Being the bishop, you can invite one person to your private chapel for confirmation. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, well, the mass was online, so there were thousands of people being present in a sense, yeah? but the confirmation was for one person. Mm. And uh, you can imagine the, the experience for that person, uh, for myself. Yeah. This is completely different and very important. So um, I think that we, we, at the end, we discovered uh, all of us in Polish church that what matters is the personal meeting, person to person, person to person, in the community. But sometimes uh, there is no chance to gather the community. There is no possibility. But uh, the personal meeting is always possible, and it is the most important thing. Then, of course, uh, we discovered uh, a great heart for uh, for charity. Well, this is something beyond imagination. Yeah. What, what we could do on charity field, just just saying to people, we need your help. Yeah, there is a hospital; they have no equipment. There are people dying with, without equipment, medical support, uh, and. Uh, uh, the, the, the good, the best example, there is a beautiful tradition in Poland now, they, they have big marches in the cities on the 6th of January, yeah, the, the Feast of Revelation, we say uh, three kings. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, usually we have a big marches of the people following three uh, fellows uh, being the kings. Yeah? 
and uh, so a lot of singing, crying, mm. yeah. and of course it was forbidden. So we decided that we will. Um, uh, uh, I, I invited three bishop, two bishops, yeah, and and myself. One was Lutheran bishop, and one was Calvinist bishop, and invited them to to create the three kings. Team. Mm -hmm. And we collected uh, money for medical equipment to the house of sick children. Because those three kings, yeah, a wise man, uh, whatever, mm -hmm. they brought the gifts to Christ child, mm -hmm. to Jesus child. Yeah. So we, we, the message was there is Jesus child being present in all those. Uh, children being in a in a hospice, mm -hmm. so we can all of us we can go to to him as to Bethlehem with our gifts, yeah? mm -hmm. and uh, what we have collected for the for these children is be, be, be beyond imagination. Yeah, we went with five lorries. Why? <laughs> Yeah, five lorries. That's amazing. But, uh, yeah, but uh, this is important to to remember. Yeah, to remember and uh, not to to lose it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but of course the future is all future depends on uh, experience or personal experience of Jesus. This is the mm -hmm. future when. You have no this, you have nothing. Even having the charity ideas and uh, uh, online possibilities, blah, blah, blah. You can have everything. But uh, if there is no uh, personal meeting with Jesus, there is nothing. Afterwards. Yeah. Amen. I don't think we could finish on a better note than that, Archbishop. Thank you so, so much for your time. Thank you. I would, um, we're, we're actually just going to have everyone jump into breakout rooms now and just um, have a space to digest what you've shared with us and stuff. And, and if you guys are looking for something to talk about, I would love for you just to think about what's the one idea that you could have, like the Archbishop's site, about getting, getting something happening in your area that could actually change the community and change the atmosphere in Christ's name. So if you'd like to just jump into your breakout rooms, we're just going to have those conversations now. And thank you again, Archbishop. It's been amazing. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.